We've got one. Somehow we've hooked into something. Yes, we got it. It's in the net. I'm just in the garage having a tidy up after a very busy summer of fishing. Most of what we've been doing lately has been carp fishing, quite a lot of different places around the country. But what we wanted to talk to you today about is a session we did on a day ticket carp fishery. For a bit of a backstory, in the spring we quit our jobs to give us more time to work on our channel, to fish and to film. The support that you guys gave us was immense and we appreciate it massively. In addition to this, Corda and Guru, two top European fishing brands, decided to support our channel. This makes what we do financially viable and actually means that we can work full time on our YouTube channel and make more videos for you guys. We actually spent a few days in the summer up at the Corda and Guru offices chatting with the guys who work for the companies about how they can help us with the films we make. On one occasion we bumped into the main man, Danny Fairbrass. He's the owner of Corda and Guru and whilst we were chatting with him, we got talking about the new day ticket fishery that Embryo was set to open. Embryo Angling Habitats is an organisation that Danny founded in 2014. Its aim is to secure the future of carp fishing by protecting its own and other fisheries from predation and creating habitats for people to fish in in the future. There's a load of different waters that they manage now, but Norton is their first day ticket fishery. Danny and also the guys at Embryo kindly invited us up to test out the fishing at Norton Disney and see what it has to offer. Our first visit was in mid-August during a heatwave. After a walk around the lake, we found some large shoals of carp sat in the sun near an island. We managed to get the odd fish to take a floating pellet, but in the heat we were really struggling. We cast out rods, tried surface fishing and also solid PVA bags on the bottom, but to no avail. To put another downer on the session, I woke up in the morning feeling absolutely horrendous, really, really sick. I think it was heat stroke because we spent the whole day previous out in the sun and I hadn't drunk enough water. But anyway, we had to call that session short and head home. However, it wasn't long before we organised another session to return to Norton Disney. And luckily this time, not only was the weather better, but the fish were also on the feed. There are a couple of lakes to fish at Norton Disney, but we chose to fish from Billy's Lake, the easier of the two. We've seen one fish jump the opposite corner of the entire lake. This area is cool though, so we can see so much water. Just seen one, a long way out, way out of my casting range, but closer to this side than probably the opposite side. I think we've pretty much decided that this particular swim gives us good access to a large amount of the lake, but you've got to be where the fish are, and I have seen a couple of fish out to the right, and we heard one splash in the bay to the left, so Alex and I are going to fight over who's, who goes in what swim, and uh, yeah, we'll go get set up. I've just taken a nice big lead and taking my rig off and I'm just casting it out at the moment feeling it down to the bottom seeing what the drop is like and I'm finding when I cast straight in front of this swim it goes down quite deep it takes quite a long time to sink but then it's just big loads of weed that the lead gets stuck in you can feel when you're retrieving it and it starts getting plugged in it now what I really want to find is somewhere that doesn't have all this weed and instead somewhere with um, a cleaner bottom. Currently this weed bed is <laughs> wrapped around my lead so I'm going to try and ease this weed in and then keep casting in sort of a fan. I started on the left and slowly cast around to the right so I don't miss anywhere. And then uh, hopefully I, I find an area where I don't reel in a ball of weed like this. <laughs> Because of the patchy weed on the lake bed, Carl opted for a tactic which would allow him to present his bait perfectly every time, even if the rig landed in weed. He made up some small solid PVA bags of micro pellet and cast them in the direction of the fish we had seen.
Carl's just got his rods out and soon after putting the bait out over his spots, he actually saw a fish jump. So we're feeling quite confident currently. I've been given the swim to the left, given. <laughs> I was given it by Carl. I stole the swim at the, fr <laughs> at the front. I just ran down there and got set up because I liked the look of it. So I took the leftover swim, which is this one where we have seen a couple of carp jump. I have been plumbing around for about half an hour and I couldn't really find many clear spots. There were a couple when they were very small. So when I found them, I made sure to clip it up and remember the spot. I found one about 20 yards over to the right where I'm going to put my first rod. And then I kind of want to put one down this margin as well because it looks really good and I saw some bubbles coming up. So I'm going to put one right over there, one right over there. Don't know what I'll do with my third, but I'm going to get my rigs tied right now. Snowman rigs as usual, 15 mil bottom bait and then a bright 10 mil pop up on top. Why are you wearing sunglasses? It's like the darkest day in weeks. Like I'm a cool kid. Oh, you're really cloudy. <laughs> Just makes you look cool, I think, personally. Make, makes you look like a proper carp fisherman. Yeah. I'm the James Bond of carp fishing. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, I've deleted that. <laughs> that was cringe. I'm going to use quite a long rig, because there's a lot of weed about. And even if it does land in a patch of weed, it'll sink down slowly over it. We've got one. Somehow we've hooked into something. Taken most of the night though. I woke up a couple of times just worried <laughs> we hadn't had a bite. But eventually my rod placed quite far out in this swim. Near where we were seeing them jump just on dock yesterday. And it just ripped off fast. It was a good bite. Yes, we got it. First one of the session. It's in the net. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> it doesn't look bad either. Whoa. Oh yeah, he's a nice one. Result. It felt like it took ages just because I was waking up throughout the night, heard a few fish jump out, and just, I was just worried that I hadn't had a bite yet. But yeah, we got one in the net. First look at a Billy's Lake carp. Whoa, he's such a plump fish. Got woken up in the middle of the night to my longest rod ripping off. Took a load of line on the take, got stuck in loads of weed, and then eventually managed to get it in the net. Yeah, what a beautiful fish. <laughs> nice. bite was good and now it's just coming straight in really. <laughs> he swam in the net. Pretty little mirror. Should have guessed it would be about half the size of Alex's. Bit of a theme occurring once again. But we got a carp each. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell I just woke up? <laughs> there it is. Another really cool carp. And considering this is a, gonna be a day ticket fishery very, very soon, there is a cracking mixture of carp in here uh, of all different sizes as well. And this one is, as I said, a little bit smaller than the one that Alex caught, but a character in itself, really cool looking scales on it and nice coloration on it too.
Oh, this is just woken up. Oh, it's too bright outside. Having a good sleep and a nice lion, but I was awoken again to another bite. Again on the long rod. It seems like the fish are definitely holding mostly out long in front of this swim. I did have rods in the margins where we saw some fish yesterday, but that's done nothing. He's stuck in a lot of weed currently. He's slowly coming through. Do you reckon it's even still on? I reckon it probably is. I haven't felt it like come off at any moment, but it does just feel like a big weed bit at the moment. Oh yeah. Oh, he's still there, all right. Well, he's coming into the margin, and all the weeds come off the line, so I can actually play him properly now. It feels like the fish has come off when they're stuck in weed because the weeds over their head and they just come towards you slowly. Just got to keep the pressure on, keep it coming and normally the weed will come free. Like it has done here. And we've got another hard fighting mirror on the end. Yay! Third fish for us on this overnight session at Northern Disney. This lake has proved to have some beautiful fish in it. I've managed two bigger ones. Carl had a nice little one as well. Yeah, not bad for a quick night session. Oh, wow. This feels decent. Oh. We were just thinking about packing up and going home. But the carp is still in the swim. Nice hair. Oh wow, <laughs> that's, like, that's like, that's bed hair to the map. <laughs> okay. So I look like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look like a car fang that's just woken up. Oh, that's true. Oh wow, look how dark it is. They're so filled out and plump. Beautiful colours as well. So that was the end of our night session up at Norton Disney. The lake that we fished and the one next to it are now open to the public. You can get a day ticket on there by visiting the Embryo Angling website. If you're interested at all in the tactics that we used in this video, which were mostly based around using PVA bags, feel free to check out our latest video that's just launched on our tutorials channel. There'll be a link right at the end of this video and in the description to this film where you can go and watch our introduction to using PVA in your fishing. Anyway, for the moment, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys again soon.